But we want to welcome the uh, Facebook fans. Wish you guys were here, but uh, you're not. Uh, and uh, just uh, so that you know, my name is Albert Gallegos. You can see my big California, New York, and you're wondering who the funny guy is. But anyway, uh, we want to welcome you, and uh, we're going to start with a me uh, message here on uh, James 3, 1 to 12. So let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the words that you have put into your book, Lord, that we may take them and use them in our lives, Lord. We pray that um, the Holy Spirit come in and open up our our eyes of our hearts like the, uh, like the uh, worship team was singing, Lord, and that uh, we uh, learn from all this stuff, Lord. We thank you for all that you do, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, now, guys, uh, as proclaimed Christians, we are supposed to be a reflection of Jesus Christ, right? It means that we're supposed to be like Jesus or identical like Jesus Christ. We are to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, and shine like Jesus. It's like my grandson trying to look like me. He puts on my boots, puts on my hat, he brushes my teeth. I brush, if I brush my teeth, he has to brush his teeth. He, he imitates the way I also sleep. He wants to be like his grandpa, and we should want to be like Jesus. But since the fall of our grandparents, Adam and Eve, we were born sinners. It tells us in Romans 3.23, we are all sinners and have fallen short of the glory of God. But since Jesus' crucifixion and Jesus sending the Holy Spirit as a helper, we were born with the Holy Spirit on one shoulder and the deceiving evil one on the other shoulder. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and tell him, shame, shame, you were born a sinner. You see, nobody has to teach us to sin we have, we, or have to be influenced. But because of the result of the fall in Adam and Eve, we inherited sin. So we don't, so we don't become sinners because we sin. We we sin because we are sinners. Well, how does sin come around? You know that God gave us free will. We either do good or bad, just or unjust. In, in reality, we don't have to, to have our friends coaxing us to sin. Come on, bro, let's do this. Or go ahead and take it. Nobody's go watching. There, there is no one around. They want to catch us. We're only going to do this once. We don't need our friends to tell us all those things. That deceiving evil one on your shoulder tells you that just like he, he did with, uh, with Eve. Come on, girl. Only one apple. And you will have knowledge like you won't believe. And what does God know if you eat one apple out of the tree? Telling you, you will die. That would never happen. This is what James said in James 1, 4, 1, 14, 15, verses, verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when, he de when desire has conceived, he gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. One of the ways that we sin is through our mouth. When I was younger, I used to make fun of my sister just to get under her skin. My sister was born with some disabilities, so she needed extra care. And as mothers, they protect. So when I would make fun of my sister, my mother would tell me, No le estés haciendo chunga a tu hermana. Chunga falls under the category of making fun of, uh, of someone or bullying, bullying. You see, guys, in our bodies, we have a beast that makes us sin. And the sin of the beast is very destructive. And, it, and that is why James tells us that we need, to, we need to bridle our body and put a bit in our mouth. Instead of our foot, let's read what James has, has to say. Open your Bibles to James 3, verses 1 to 6. This is what he says. My brethren, did not many of you become teachers, knowing that... We shall receive a strict judgment, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we need to put a bit in horses, 
horses' mouths, that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. Look also at sheep, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they were turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a small member and boasts great things. See how great a forest is, is, is a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of, of iniquity. The tongue is not among our members that, is, that it defiles the, the whole body and sets the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Let's see what James told us in those six verses. My brethren, that, let not many of you become teachers knowing that we shall receive stricter judgment. James is telling us that as teachers, we are held to a higher standard. That is why I am afraid to, to say something that I should not say from behind the pulpit. Whatever I say must be interpreted as it is in the Bible. The word of God also be taught in the humility and love. You see, the, war, the word of God is very precise and very specific. And without flaw, without twisting it to their, to their convenience, better watch out when judgment day comes. Even as teachers, we have to be the example, the way we talk to people when we are not behind the pulpit. As Christians, even though we don't teach from behind the pulpit, we are sharing the word of God and since we know the word of God, we also will have a stricter judgment. This is what uh, it says in Romans 2, 21, 23. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who teach, who, who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who, who harbor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through the breaking of the law? This is why Jesus was always calling the Sadducees and the Pharisees as, as Christians, we should not be hypocrites. As Christians, we must shine like Jesus and teach solid doctrine. Verse 2 and 3, for we, we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is perfect. Man able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, put, these, put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Many of us here are perfect. How many of us here are perfect? Not, not a single one of us. But let's not let that be an excuse for us to sin. Yes, we have the tendency to say, I am human, I make mistakes, and yes, it is true. We do make mistakes, but we do not repent. But we, but we, but do we repent and apologize, or do we continue on down the path of sin? I remember uh, one of my uncles told me when I got a DWI, he scolded me for getting a DWI, and I answered, "Live and learn." His response was, "What are you, a dog? Only dogs live and learn." In fact, that uncle thought that I should have been a politician because of my loud voice. But this loud voice also is very sinful. I would say things that I should not have uh, said. They were said without thought. In fact, if it weren't for God protecting me from saying things, I should have, I should have not said I would have, I would have my pearly whites. I would be using effort then to keep my dentures. A lot of those things I would say were fighting words, but God through the Holy Spirit has been trying to teach me a different way of expressing myself and the way I speak. Here's a good quote that I found in the internet, but I couldn't figure out who wrote it. No man is perfect, neither is any woman. So don't go around looking for what, you're, what you'll never find. The best amongst them is, most, is those who are teachable and selfless. If you found this in a person, do well to keep them. Do well to keep them. I think that God is looking for teachable and selfless men and women that he can keep. keep. God was looking for you and is still looking for many more to teach. He wants you to help recruit them 
he wants you to be like those uh, recruiters in the armed forces and uh, call them in. James says at the end of the verse, verse 3, that if we are perfect, we should be able to bridle our whole bodies. Well, what is a bridle? A bridle is a piece of equipment used to, to uh, direct a horse or beast. The bridle includes both the head stall that, uh, that holds a, a bit that goes in the mouth of a horse and the reins that are attached to the bit. James uses the illustration of the bridle because a bridle is used to control a horse. A horse is a beast that, is, that it, this animal usually weighs 2,000 pounds. Another one of my uncles used to call these beasts bestial, beasts. Now, on a bridle, you can attach different types of beats. There are D-ring be beats, the regular beat. They also make soft beats for horses with tender, with tender, for tender mouths. And many other uh, types and horsemen use the one that the horse takes to, to the best. But they all are used to control the horse. But there is something else you can put on your bridle to control the horse. It is, it is called a hockamon. This is not a bit. It goes around the horse, nose, and chin, and, uh, and this hockamore puts pressure on the veins of the, of the, on the veins of the horse nose. The nose area is a very sensitive, so when you pull on the reins, it puts pressure on the veins, and it gives you better control of the horse. In fact, the translators of the New Living Translation Bible say that there are people with different kind of tongues. The one one of them are, of those are people that with a speech pattern who think before speaking. They know when to silence is best and give wise advice. Proverbs 10, 19 says, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. In other words, zip it up before thinking and speaking or you might land up like the parrot and that John got as a kid. This guy named John received the parrot as a kid. The parrot had an attitude, and even worse, vocabulary. Every word out of his, his bird's mouth was rude, obnoxious, and, and laced with profanity. John tried and tried to change the bird's attitude by consistently saying only polite words, playing soft music, and anything else he could think of to clean the bird's vocabulary. Finally, John was fed up, and he yelled at the parrot. The parrot yelled back. John shook the, the parrot and, the, and got the parrot angrier and even more rude. John, in desperation, threw up his hands, grabbed the parrot, and put him in the freezer. And for a few minutes, the parrot squawked and kicked and screamed. Then suddenly, there was total quiet. Not a peep was heard for over a minute. Fearing that he heard that he heard the parrot, John quickly opened the door to the freezer. The parrot calmly stepped out into uh, John's outstretched arm and said, "I believe I may have offended you with my rude language and actions. I am sincerely remorseful for my inappropriate transgression, and I fully intend to do everything I can to correct my rude, unforgivable behavior." John was stunned at the change of the bird's attitude. As John was about to ask the parrot what made just a dramatic change in his uh, behavior, the bird spoke up and asked very softly, may I ask, what did the turkey do? So don't land up like the parrot or the turkey. Then there are people with a caring tongue. They speak truthfully. They can, they can see through other people. And they can tell when people need a listening ear. And they always have the best uh, encouraging words. Proverbs 15, 23 says, Everyone enjoys a feeding reply. It is wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. Proverbs 12, 25 says, Where we weighs a person down, an encouraging word cheers a person up. Then there is a the conniving tongue, those are people with a speech pattern that are filled with a speech pattern filled with wrong motives, gossips, slander, and a desire to twist the truth. 
Those are the people we call lattices. These people seem to know all the news of what is happening in town, maybe even in your own household. But the worst part about it is that by the time it gets to the last person, which is usually, which is usually you, it has already been so twisted that it makes you feel like dirt. This tongue will also create division. You remember your school years, probably from the sixth grade on up, of a group of kids who were there in their own clique. Then the next day, you would see them in two different cliques talking, talking about each other. Proverbs 25, 18 tells, says, what people feel like when rumors are spread about them, telling lies about others is, an, is as harmful as hitting them with an ax, wounding them with a sword, or shooting them with a sharp arrow. Then we have the, the fourth tongue, the careless, the careless tongue. Those are the people that have a speech pattern that is filled with lies, curses, quick-tempered words, which can lead to rebellion and destruction. All of us probably know someone that uh, someone that uh, they can, they can talk and, and most of the, everything they coming out of their mouth is a lie. They are combative, or everything they have in, is better than everybody else's. I have a friend that is always saying in gesture, "Si no hay plática, si no hay mentira, no hay plática." In other words, if there's no lies, there's no conversation. Well, as I ponder with that saying, I keep thinking, well, we can share Jesus all day long. And then with that, there is nothing but truth in that conversation. And you can talk about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all day long unless you are want to be you are want to be wanna be you are a wannabe Christian and want to drag God through the dirt or mud. James also used two other illustrations of small things and how these small things control big things. And the one of them is a rudder. It is a small flat piece hinged vertically near the stern of the boat or ship for steering. For steering. It is also used on, plan on planes. James verse 4, Look, also ships, although they are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot desires, and then he uses a small campfire or a control burn, and what a devastating impact it can have. James verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a, a forest a little fire kindles? And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. In this verse, James is comparing the tongue to fire and the damage that uh, both can do. The tongue to fire and what damage and what both can do. Here in New Mexico, we have seen how devastating little fires can be from a campfire to a control burn. Those little fires create chaos, fear, hatred, and it displaces people. It also tears families apart. Relationships are destroyed. Well, the tongue is also does the same when gossip or words of uh, destruction are said. The tongue is a raging fire full of uh, wickedness, and it, and it sources from the hell itself. The devil likes that uncontrolled tongue. The devil likes division. The devil likes to see relationships that took years to build broken up. The devil likes to see families broken up. And just like the scars that were left in the forest after the fire and makes the forest look ugly, so are the scars that are left after words that should not have been said. The scars are so bad sometimes that even after apologizing, there is no healing. And a gossip is amazing how fast it travels just like the wildfire out of control. And with this new technology we have, it seems like every device has a eight megabytes and gossip spreads really fast. In verse six, it also tells us that the tongue defiles our whole body. You see, people tell, can tell what kind of a person you are just by what comes out of your mouth. Words that come out of our mouths can even make us look like murderers. 
it is amazing that we can tame all types of animals, even make them obedient to our commands, and yet the tongue is like a bottle of stump killer, a container of rat poison. That is what James tells us in James 3, 7, 8. For every kind of beast and bird of reptiles and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly, evil, full, and deadly poison. We all like to go to the zoo and look at the animals at SeaWorld or the, or the, or the circus. In fact, this pastor was saying, here's some uh, tickets. You can go to the circus and look at all the animals at the cage. And so, and we, we see all these animals that have been tamed and trained to do, that, uh, to do what their keeper wants them to do, but the tongue no keeper can in fact, there should be an icon on our mouth that represents poison, like they have on containers that poison is, is packaged in. You know that skeleton head with two bones in an X in front of the, in front of the skeleton, skeleton head? Because poison is what's packaged inside our mouth. That tongue is just like poison. Our mouths are also full of poison that even we as Christians we curse our neighbor, family, family members, ex-husband, ex-wife, the catcher at the grocery store, or the person that pulled out in front of us. We even curse the store because it is out of food or materials that, we, that didn't show up. But we show up on Sunday or Wednesday and praise God. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, it says that God created all image in the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. If, great, if God created everything, why do we curse everything that God created and then praise God for everything that is, that is what? Uh, the, everything. This is what it says in James 3, 10, 11. With it, the tongue, we bless our God and Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in his own cute of God. One of the same, out of the same mouth, proce mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My, my brethren, these things are not to be so. James is telling us that we as Christians should not be blessing God and then cursing what God has created. James says that as Christians, some things that come out of our mouths are things that are better kept in our mouth when we speak the things that should come out of our mouth should be the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The things that should come out of our mouths should be the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What are those fruits? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, tyrannous, tyrannity, tyrannity or generosity, sorry. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, not hate, jealousy, lust, immorality, bitterness. See, guys, two opposite things cannot come out of the same tree or spring. James says in James 11, 12, does a spring send, send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields salt and fresh, wa fresh water. So as born again Christians, let us explain something. I am using the term born again because there are Christians out there that are born, born right the first time. But not to put them down or anything because we are not here to judge. But unfortunately, they are not being taught what Christ like means. They do not realize that their actions do not reflect Jesus. But we as born-again Christians that are taught what, what being Christ-like means and we are to reflect Jesus and, and while we are in this world, we must be the light of the world. As Jesus said in John 5, 9, 5, while I, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, guys, I titled this message, Choose Your Own Bit. And I went over four types of, of people with different types of mouths. Which one are you and which 
commit to uni. As for myself, I did the uh, the uh, Hakamon because uh, even though uh, I have been, I have been, um, God has been trying to teach me to, to be a better person on, on speak, speaking to people. I still have a ten- tendency to to talk things that I shouldn't say or say things that I shouldn't say, but it happens, and uh, I have to ask a lot of forgiveness. <laughs> So let's go over the four types of mouths in case you didn't catch them because I talk a little fast and my, my northern accent is, is uh, pretty heavy and, and I stutter and all those things. The controlled tongue, those are the people with a speech pattern that think before speaking and know when to keep quiet and give wise advice. The caring tongue, those are people with a speech pattern that speak truthfully while seeking to encourage. The conniving tongue, those are the people with a speech pattern that are filled with the wrong motives, gossip, slander, and a desire to twist the truth. Then the careless tongue, those are the people with a speech pattern that is filled with lies, curses, quick tempered words, which can lead to rebellion and destruction. As I was going over the four types of, of, of people, they, my thoughts of uh, the last two was those people People were people that like to put gasoline on the fire. Do you? In Genesis 6, 5, 6, it says, Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man. A man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil. Continually, and Lord was very sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. I can imagine God speaking to James, the words before he wrote these verses uh, in his epistle. This is probably what God uh, spoke to James. Mijito, look at how my people are, that I love, treat each other, that I love. They treat each other without respect. I want you to write this in your epistle so that people's hearts can be circumcised and that they realize that the behavior that comes out of their mouth is seen and it makes me grieve. Teaching teachings like these are, you know, teachings like these guys are very hard to to, to teach, but uh, they are in the Bible and they gotta be uh, taught, right? But uh, here's a cool verse uh, to end this this uh, message, and this is what Isaiah said when he saw the Shekinah glory of God. Isaiah six five seven. So I said, "Woe to me." For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the, li- the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to, hi- to me, having a, having a knife coal which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sins purged. How, how wonderful, how beautiful uh, when God takes control and he touches our lips and touches our hearts, and we all uh, ch- change for the better, right? Amen. Well, Pastor is going to come up, and uh, I think he's going to go uh, do the uh, campfire meeting campfire prayer.